The latest episode of Hell of a Boss surprised us with a Sunday release today, so we're gonna break it all down, with a special focus on just how heart-wrenching this episode is. Spoilers ahead for those who may not have realized it's out yet, go watch it. Oh, and if you haven't seen it yet, I released my own animated pilot last week called The Magical Girl Garnet Heart Show. It's a sort of action comedy about a magical girl and her talking cat, played by sarcastic chorus. Let's keep things simple, you know? Rescue some cats stuck in some trees or something! The cat's in a tree, it's because we want to be there. Leave us the fuck alone. Links in the pinned comment down below, go check it out, and consider being among the first to donate for more episodes. This episode opened with a flashback of Mammon performing at one of his clown shows where Teenage Fizz and Blitz happened to be attending. At this point, they were still friends, a few years before the tragic accident that would leave Fizzarelli scarred and broken. For some reason, clowning is extremely popular in Hell, and it crosses over into being extremely sexual for some reason. It's not really explained why clowning is so popular, but I think a lot of it comes down to Mammon himself. Royals are natural celebrities, people who the common folk take an interest in and aspire to be like, with a lot of what is popular in Hell simply being pushed and propagandized by princes like Mammon, and especially by princes like Mammon who try to profit off of everything they can. Following the show, Blitz and Fizz are harassed by a random imp on the street who gushes over Fizz, with him already being well known from his childhood performances at Blitz's family circus, and him being someone that a person going to Mammon's clown show would probably be at the very least somewhat aware of. Now this fan, nicknamed Creepso in the credits, is quite the creep as his nickname suggests, but he's not the kind of creepy fan that Angel has in the Hasman Hotel pilot who sends him letters about his feet. That person has a fixation on Angel that is focused on wanting Angel, still not healthy, but it's rooted in actually wanting him. This person is shown here and later in the episode not to really want Fizz or even really like his work, but rather is attracted to Fizz because he is successful, and believes that that success is something that he himself deserves. In his mind, Fizz is someone who could elevate him to what he believes is his rightful place in the spotlight. As he explains in his rant, he believes that it is specifically Fizz's fame that can be combined with his raw, undiscovered talent, as he calls it. Later, he shows himself as imagining being in love with Fizz, but in those scenarios, Fizz is just a prisoner who treats him like he's the greatest thing in the world. Now, within any group of people, even a fandom, you'll find those who are empathetic and others who are narcissistic. Empathetic fans tend to enjoy a fandom for the actual entertainment value, and narcissistic people tend to enjoy things because of the way they can use it to elevate themselves. Some fans write passionate fan fictions about the shows they love because they enjoy just creating little scenarios where they get to live in the world with the characters they like, and narcissistic fans tend to write stories attempting to revise the author's work because they saw it as flawed. That was more the kind of fan that Creepso is. When loving Fizz is what he thinks will elevate him, he does that. Not just to Fizz's face, but to the public as well. Because publicly liking someone who is popular can help others liking you to them. When Fizz doesn't immediately like Creepso, or help him to make his dreams come true, or develop a personal connection with him, Creepso self-destructs and has to belittle Fizz. This is something narcissists do because they know that, no matter how bad or evil they are coming off, that legitimately good people like Fizzarali appears to be be, will still feel pain about it, and will still worry that the things this person said are true about his performance and work. The worst part is, it reinforces a fear Fizzarelli likely has that the people around him who say he is good are only saying so because it continues to help elevate them as well, and when he falls from popularity, they will turn on him, something Fizz expresses a more direct fear about later. Following this, we jump to the present where Fizz is preparing for the big contest that Mammon holds each year, where the winner gets to renew their contract and be part of Mammon's brand, American Idol style, but with Fizzarelli winning it every year since he first started competing. Fizz is extremely worried about losing his contract this year, but the motives behind this are very complex. He claims it's for Mammon, for the fans, and for himself, but the one thing he doesn't say is that it's for Osmodius, because Osmodius won't understand at this point why Fizz feels that he has to do it for Osmodius, with Osmodius actually trying to convince Fizz not to worry, and even to give it up. Osmodius doesn't like the contract, particularly because of fans like Creepso, and Osmodius feels uncomfortable making the love robots in the image of Fizz to sell to the creepy masses. Fizz manages to convince Osmodius that he has to do this, however, and goes off to join Mammon for the show and money-making press opportunities that Mammon pushes Fizz into. 
As extra help, Osmodius hires Blitz, who is doing way more work as a bodyguard in Hell than as an assassin on Earth at this point, but he decides to come along to help protect Fizz, something he did when they were younger as well. Fizz wants to impress Mammon and do good by him, feeling like he owes Mammon everything in his life, and this makes Fizz give in to interacting with fans, which, which in turn leads to Creepso rearing his face again. Blitzo saves the day, but leaves Fizz shaken up, and he gets a visit from Osmodius, asking him about why he really is pushing himself to compete in this competition. And what happened next absolutely broke my heart, and had me legitimately crying. Something that doesn't usually happen to me when watching episodes, and when I do cry, it tends to be on repeat viewings after I've had time to consider the depths of the characters and their layers. In the episode just before this one, Blitz made it very clear that he thinks all the royals like Stolas and Osmodius are incapable of having feelings for lowly imps like he and Fizzarolli, and that they only fake liking them for their sexual desires. Fizz seems pretty confident with his relationship to Osmodius overall, but some part of him has to have that same fear. Osmodius claims he's known Mammon since the beginning of Hell, which would be a very long time. Osmodius is living a seemingly endless life in Hell, and Fizz will have a lifetime comparatively closer to that of a human on Earth, before disappearing into the ether entirely with no afterlife after he dies in Hell. Fizz probably feels that even if Osmodius does truly love him, that Fizz is not the first mortal demon that Osmodius had in his life, and very likely won't be the last, as there is still an eternity of existence after Fizzarelli inevitably passes away. Some part of Fizzarelli feels that he is ultimately disposable, because that's all such a short time ultimately can be for a long-living or immortal royal. And with that comes the fear that this time could be cut even shorter if Fizzarelli were to stop being the kind of appealing partner that Osmodius first fell in love with. Fizz acknowledges these fears to Osmodius, revealing that the contract with Mammon was a large part of how he and Osmodius came into each other's lives and eventually fell in love. Without that contract, Fizz is worried that Osmodius won't love him anymore. This sounds shallow on the surface, but Fizz recognizes that a lot of what Osmodius fell in love with was the performance and character that Mammon helped Fizz develop. Fizz says Osmodius loves him because of who he is at his best, but underneath his hat, he revealed the shattered, broken remains of his horns and the reminder that he is covered in white scars, his limbs destroyed and replaced by robotics. Fizz sees himself essentially as a love robot, something painted and costumed and given mechanical enhancements for other people's enjoyment, but underneath that, he is a broken imp. Without all of the fame and desire that comes from the masses of hell, Fizz feels Osmodius will, over time, grow bored with him. Fizz knows that at some point he has to lose this contest, even if he remains the most famous clown overall, and his goal becomes not to win the contract to continue this lifestyle, but to go out on top, to prove he's got it one last time and quit on his terms so that no one can ever say that he lost. We live in an era where a lot of people are being turned into brands. Business names are swapped for usernames and catchy handles that help us share our opinions, whether for profit or just for the sake of putting our own ideas out there. Even when it's not for profit, people can feel a large sense of their identity is tied to the kind of brand that they've built up. When a brand stops working, and when that attention goes away, there is a natural fear that the people around them will stop loving them too. Not instantly, in a single moment, in some cartoony way, but slowly over time, with every year becoming more and more hollow with your partner as the brand begins to disappear, and they are left with the person underneath, with all of his scars and broken pieces. Osmodius as the Demon Prince of Lust is somehow the most emotionally mature and empathetic demon in all of Hell. He assures Fizzarelli that he loves him for who he is, for the moments we see them enjoying together such as in the mornings, but not for the fame that Mammon provides that ultimately just keeps Fizz away from Osmodius instead of working together on fun projects. While anyone can be lying in this show, Osmodius is clearly written to be a never-ending well of love for Fizz, and with his wise age, it seems, it seems that he's thought a lot about the partners he has likely taken in his very long life, and how he will treat them with grace as their mortal life begins to change and inevitably end. He assures all this by telling Fizz that he was always the great performer that he is, that Mammon was able to make him famous, but all of that just comes from having a platform where Fizz has proven year after year that he was always the real star. And then he does it again, with a pretty cool music performance among many cool music performances in this episode, with Fizz clearly beating the Envy Fish Twins. However, with that victory, he is able to quit, something that Mammon did not like. 
Mammon holds this contest for his contract every year, but even without a victory, it seems he really wasn't willing to let go of Fizzaroli, and what happened next was absolutely epic. Mammon and Osmodius let loose with their crazy, larger demon forms, giving us the most intense full demon mode moment since Dolus let out his Owl Beast in Episode 6 of Season 1. This made Beelzebub as a monster yelling at Luna look like a petty little screaming match. Ultimately, Fizz is able to quit because Osmodius is willing to be open about his relationship with Fizz now, something his fans adored instead of hated, as people seem to have been secretly shipping Fizz and Osmodius for some time. However, Mammon insists that they will regret this. We've been building up a bigger plot with Osmodius and Fizz for a while now, and I imagine we will continue to explore that with Mammon trying to get revenge on the two in all sorts of ways. After what happened with Crimson and the Greed Ring in the previous episode, I imagine Mammon will be able to find a lot of allies, and instead of Osmodius and Fizz joining Crimson against the IMP gang as I had once theorized, it seems like Osmodius and Fizz may just be more targets for the many villains in Hell of a Boss who are already after Blitz and his co-workers. But for more information on that, hit that subscribe button because we're going to have a lot of hell of a boss theories coming out this week. Leave your opinions, theories, and topics you want me to cover in the comments down below, and don't forget to check out the Magical Girl Garnet Heart Show. I think you guys are absolutely going to love it.